our well-being is inseparable from the well-being of the world. I think that our understanding of that principle is still very uh, rudimentary because it's not so simple as if we kill the Amazon, if we destroy nature, then we're going to die. What it really means is that if we do those things, something dies within ourselves. It doesn't mean that this is the concept of interbeing, as it's called in Buddhism. Uh, it doesn't mean that if there are people uh, languishing in, in abject poverty in uh, you know, Nairobi or Lagos or Bangladesh, that you're going to be poor someday too. It means we're already poor in some way. An unequal society, even in an unequal society, even the wealthy cannot really be wealthy because their position requires constant vigilance to, to, to prevent the poor from getting their stuff. Like you can't, real wealth is, is feeling at home in the world. Real wealth is feeling of belonging. Real wealth is the absolute freedom to be generous without concern, without worry. But if, there's, if you're seeing poor people around or you're conscious of your um, privilege in respect to the poor people, then you can never actually fully be at ease because if you're generous and you give it all away, you're going to be one of the poor people's. So, so that's the sense, that's how interbeing operates. That's how this larger sense of self operates. Um, it's not, uh-oh, I better be nice to nature, otherwise bad things will happen to me. It's that what is happening to nature is happening to me. What's happening to other people is happening to me. I cannot be whole as long as this is happening. Therefore, uh, my, my, the, the improvement of my well-being uh, requires the improvement of the world. And what I give to the world, I am also giving to myself. It's not even so much that it comes back to me. It's that it, even through the act of giving, it already enriches me. And this is hard to reconcile with our lived experience in a market economy where if you give it all away, if you let yourself get taken advantage of, you know, like <clears throat> you're gonna, you, you, nothing good comes of that. If you're in trust, when you get the email um, saying that, you know, uh, the widow of a Nigerian prince wants to send you $5 million and you trust that, like you're, you, it's not gonna end well. So th this is not just a figment of our philosophical imagination that we live in a world of separation. We have, we have built systems around that story of separation that then make that story true. So the systems actually create the story and the story creates the systems. 